Hello there, common wall from here. The reveal of the Nintendo Switch OLED model can easily be defined as polarizing, specifically for Western, mainly docked, hardcore players. For only undocked players, it is a great upgrade in every shape or form. But for only docked, hardcore or even casual players with big 4K TVs, it changes literally nothing for the better apart from a cool and more functional new dock with a LAN port at last. Then why did Nintendo do anything to upgrade the system on chip from the greatly outdated at this point? point custom NVIDIA Tegra chip. I would divide this question into four answers. The home market of the rising sun, Nintendo being Nintendo, the worldwide semiconductor shortage and last but not least, pricing. So be sure to press that like button to share this video, subscribe and press the notification bell to get us past 300,000 subscribers and unlock our big Switch OLED plus Metroid Red giveaway. Let's begin with the Japanese home market, which with its long school and working hours, plus heavy overtime use for the latter, is probably the worst place in the world to be a TV gamer, since the little time you have with friends and your family usually takes priority over sitting in front of a TV in a small and very thin walled apartment. This way of life or work if you prefer has resulted in the Japanese gaming market becoming more mobile than anywhere else in the world. You play handheld and with your headphones on to not disturb those around you. When you have free time, commuting to or from school, work, in the subway, bus or train. These commutes can even take up to an hour, so here you already see a clear spot of where Japanese children and young adults are gaming. The other locations Japanese young adults have time to play is during lunch breaks in a nearby park, or when being car passengers in the backseat of cars, or when flying. Your average Japanese adult has simply far less time to play in front of his TV at home. It also doesn't help that the average Japanese house is over half the average in the US. Which by the way is also the case in Europe and in Japanese cities it rarely goes beyond 90 square meters. With less space it is also less likely that you will buy a 40 plus inch 4K TV. With thin walls you will need headphones when playing which let's remember the Joy-Cons and Pro Controller have no headphone jack. And the Switch and Switch OLED has no built-in Bluetooth support for wireless headphones. With all this in mind, it is no wonder why the average Japanese gamer plays far less on their TVs than the US. A trend that we have seen the last decade based on the decline of the TV-only PlayStation console sales, resulting in Sony focusing far more on Western markets than its own home Japanese market. While well, that and the complete Nintendo dominance of the Japanese home market where handheld is king and TV play comes second. But the possibility to switch to dock TV play is very appreciated when you have guests or family over to play on the TV together. But this isn't only a trend in Japan as for many the Nintendo Switch is a handheld first and the reason that they are able to play modern games at all. And the developers know it since the handheld nature is a reason why many games are even being ported to the Nintendo Switch in the first place. You don't have to look further than The Witcher 3 or Blurry Switcher which is best enjoyed undocked and usually played this way by players who already own the game on PC, PlayStation or Xbox but want to have the option to play the game while on the go. For developers like CD Projekt Red, this works as they sell more copies of the game and more importantly in the Japanese handheld dominated market. Nintendo first made the Nintendo Switch Lite handheld in 2019 and now the Nintendo Switch OLED in 2021 for a reason, as the undock nature of the console is why Nintendo dominates the Japanese gaming and worldwide handheld market. Which brings us over to Nintendo being Nintendo. Since the Wii was properly revealed in 2006, the big N has been following its own path of keeping their consoles at a lower pricing level than the PlayStation and Xbox, usually $100 to $150 below, which fits seeing that the 349 USD Switch OLED is $150 cheaper than the 499 US dollar 4K PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. However, this pricing edge has come at times, or most often, at the expense of power. When everyone else introduced HD gaming in 2006, Nintendo waited until 2012. When full HD gaming became the standard for all games on the PlayStation 4 in 2013 and 4K on the PlayStation 5 in 2020, the Nintendo Switch has still not delivered a single open world or open world-like title that has surpassed 900p in 2021. 
900p 30 frames per second for Breath of the Wild and 900p 50 to 60 frames per second for Super Mario Odyssey is the best the Nintendo Switch has been able to perform in this category. And often games like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 do not surpass the cursed 720p standard for non-Nintendo open world titles. For on the play this doesn't matter, but on the TV it is an eyesore, especially when you play in 900 or 720p on a big 4K TV with frame rates dropping from 30 down to 20. But Nintendo's point of view is simple. Undock Play has priority, as the handheld market saved us during the last generation from a complete home console TV disaster. The Switch and Switch OLED are those handhelds that can be docked, but the priority will always be on the handheld aspect. Since at the end of the day, Nintendo doesn't care as much as we would like to think about us English-speaking YouTubers, but rather the average consumer who doesn't capture game footage on a TV, but plays games switching between docked and undocked play as he sees fit. Since many of us young adults don't have as much time to sit in front of our TVs to play, but we have plenty of time while commuting or being outside and that being by car, plane, and so on, it's been highlighted in so many Nintendo Switch commercials. It, it is a very big selling point. Naturally, Nintendo will eventually want to reach 4K resolutions in dock TV play, as Nintendo on average lags 4-6 to six years behind the PlayStation and Xbox norm, and the current native 4K one introduced to consoles last year in 2020 has been challenged by a worldwide semiconductor shortage, which has turned their release year into a supply versus demand nightmare and a scalper's paradise. The semiconductor shortage crisis was avoided by Nintendo as they stick to their current system on chip and video custom Tegra chip. Yes, this may have come at the expense of a little hardware boost, say making 1080p, not 900p or even 720p the new standard for games like the next Zelda and Monolith Soft title. For Nintendo, this shortage has two natures. It is both a blessing and a curse. Curse if they wanted to upgrade their docked power, but from a financial standpoint, a blessing, as when you cannot get hold of a PS5 this holiday, like here in Europe, where the console is sold out until 2022, many are likely to see the Switch OLED and think, hmm, I don't have a Switch, I haven't yet played Zelda Breath of the Wild, I love playing Smash when visiting friends, and this new Metroid game looks clean. It also has many of my favorite games of the last decade ported for handheld play, plus a new open world Pokemon and Zelda next year, plus eventually Metroid Prime 4. You know what, since I cannot buy the PlayStation 5 this holiday, I will get the Switch OLED model instead and delay the 4K or maybe even 8K TV purchase until next year. You see the logic? Nintendo must have thought that upscale 4K would have been nice, but not nice enough to risk selling to people who still don't own 4K TVs and at the same time themselves also not have enough systems to sell to meet the massive demand that would follow and have to deal with in their eyes Sony's and Microsoft's shortage crisis. Well that and the pricing of the system as an OLED 7 inches plus upscale 4K supporting Nvidia chip plus new adjustable stand plus better audio plus bigger storage would have brought the system to 399 US dollars or maybe even higher. A dangerous price that could take away the pricing edge Nintendo's had over its competitors in the first years of a new PlayStation and Xbox. Why would you outprice yourself when people who are not interested in Nintendo titles will not buy a Nintendo system since it doesn't have the future graphics pushing experiences that they crave for? For Nintendo the Switch OLED model is thus all about balancing, supporting their own Japanese handheld home market with a better product, maintaining their philosophy of not competing with Sony and Microsoft by having a different and less powerful product, not getting involved in the semiconductor shortage which is a benefit for Nintendo in 2021 and most of all not losing the $150 pricing edge. Combining all of this together explains why we didn't get upscaled 4K docked in 2021 and most likely not in 2022 and possibly even in 2023. Which hurts me a little bit personally, as I would have loved to play Breath of the Wild in a high resolution and frame rate. But for Nintendo right now, it is far more important to make, for instance, Metroid Dread sell in the impossible for Metroid Japanese market. Why else do you think Nintendo selected October 8, the launch date of this 2.5D Metroid game, for the launch of the Switch OLED and white surgical Joy-Cons, just like the Emmy robots in the game? Joy-Cons that, by the way, Etika would have loved and then showcase the following games in the worldwide reveal trailer. The new Zelda, Pokemon Gen 4 Remake, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, 51 worldwide games, clubhouse games that are sold very well in Japan, Splatoon 3, while highlighting the wide LAN port, Mario Party Superstars with Online, Ring Fit Adventure and Smash, obviously. All of these games fit the three of the four franchises that Nintendo uses as mascots for the Nintendo Tokyo Store. Mario, Link from Zelda and Inklings from Splatoon. 
only Animal Crossing was missing, since Pokemon is found next door to Nintendo Tokyo at the Shibuya Parker store. And that is all that really needs to be said. We simply need to remember that the nature of the Switch is being a 2013-ish home console, which keeps this power as a handheld. This is what has made the Switch such a success, along with some of the greatest Zelda, Mario, Smash, Splatoon, and hopefully now Metroid games of all time, launching day one on this system. Oh, and also that the OLED isn't the most necessary upgrade and doesn't harm current Switch sales until October, as hard as an upscaled 4K docked Switch model would do. Finally, I just want to say that yes, I'm disappointed that we might not play Breath of the Wild sequel in full HD on day one. But who knows, maybe the Zelda team will be able to fully optimize the game for 1080p even without any docked upgrades. And then we will see if the OLED is just the Switch equivalent to the XL for the 3DS, and whether we could see an actual Pro in late 2023, or whether we will have to wait for Nintendo 4K until late 2025, that being Nintendo's next system after the Switch or another member of the Switch family of systems. Also, if it comes out in 2023, don't be surprised if it ends up as a TV-only console model that doesn't switch. But for now, be sure to leave a like on this video to spread the truth about the no-docked upgrade for Switch OLED, subscribe plus press that notification bell to push us to 300,000 subscribers, and unlock our big Switch OLED with Metroid Red giveaway. Finally, a big thanks goes to all our patreon.com slash commonrealm patrons, and in particular to our royal producer Charles Shash. You rock! And please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.